Good morning, Pathfinders. Good to see you. Just a heads up, this is not live because I'm leading the service, um, but you can still comment on the YouTube chat, uh, put your questions, put your thoughts, and we'll get back to you at some point. Uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, who don't know me, my name is Serena and I work as the Children and Families Worker at St Andrew's Church in Dibden Purlieu. And this morning, rather than doing our Zoom um, youth group called Pathfinders, we are trying out doing a YouTube premiere. So let us know what you think, if it works, and if it's something we could do in the future to change things up a bit. Uh, but this morning we're exploring the theme of generosity. What does generosity mean? What does the Bible talk about when it talks about generosity? And does it actually matter? I mean, can we be Christians and not be generous? Let's explore together. But first of all, I'm going to play a quick game. This game is probably backwards for you. <laughs> I'm going to make it the right way around. I can't. It's called What Am I? And uh, the way this game works is I'm going to pick a card. I haven't looked at these cards, so it's off the cuff for me. But I'm going to pick a card. And on the card, there is an animal, a vegetable, or a mineral. I'm going to choose one of those things and try and describe it to you. You can write in the YouTube chat what you think I'm describing. But I'm going to be a little bit harsh and only give you two clues for each thing. Okay? So, oh yeah, one thing I should say is if it's a mineral, don't be thinking like periodic table because you'll get stuck. It basically just means object. And then vegetable sometimes isn't actually a vegetable, um, but it could be a fruit, it could be food, basically. And then animals are actually animals. So <laughs> let's start. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna speak to you about is an animal. And your two clues are this. One is that it's normally gray in color. And two, it's the animal that took Mary to Bethlehem. Fairly easy, that one. Let's see who can get it. Type your responses now. Okay, next one. I'm gonna go for the mineral this time. So, your first clue, this thing is really hot. And your second clue is don't stare directly at it. I think it was quite easy again. But hey, type your answers in the chat. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm going to do the animal for this one, but it's not an animal at all. <laughs> so this card, I think, has a misprint. But the two clues, okay, for this thing are one, we've been using it a lot more recently than we did before. And two, it comes in all sorts of shapes and sizes and smells. What do you think it is? I'm gonna do two more. Okay, next one. Let's go for the M on this one. So the object mineral. First clue. Hmm. If you were going to Dibden to a certain place in Dibden near All Saints Church, you would find lots of these things. Second clue, it's circular. A bit harder that one. <laughs> What do you think? Type on the chat. And then if there's someone who gets the most points, by the way, I will send you a prize. So, you know, you really should be typing. <laughs> okay, last one, last one. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go for the vegetable, which is not vegetable at all, um, but it's a living thing. Let's go with that. So the first clue, is it yellow and white in colour? And the second clue is they make great bracelets. Again, a bit more cryptic. 
I wonder how you did. We'll, point, we'll count those points up. Do be typing on the YouTube chat as we go along. Great to uh, interact with you and know you're there. So, what am I? Bit of fun, but also a very tenuous link to our topic. And that link is that I wonder if you felt like you would have done better if I'd have given you more clues. I only gave you two, which was quite stingy, wasn't it? <clears throat> but if I'd have gave you more clues, perhaps you'd have thought you'd be able to get all of those right. I will reveal the answers now. Um, and then I will explain a bit more about how this links to generosity. So the first one, the animal was a donkey. So that was grey and took Mary to Bethlehem. The second one was hot and you can look directly at it. It was the sun. The third one was not an animal at all, it was soap. So that was the thing we've been using a lot more recently and comes in all shapes, sizes and smells. The fourth one was um, a golf ball, because if you went down to Dibden, there's the golf club, there's circular, and you'd find lots of golf balls down there. And the last one was a daisy, because you can make daisy chains and make grid bracelets and they're normally yellow and white in colour. So maybe some of you are thinking, oh, you were harsh. If you'd gave us more clues, we would have got it. And you might have done. And this links to generosity because with generosity, more is better. So I'm going to read to you a little bit from the Bible, uh, which talks about generosity. And then I'm going to share a few thoughts and then we'll pray and then we'll go. So the bit I want to read from the Bible is from Matthew. And let me just find it. I did have my pencil in there, but I've lost it. So if you want to flick to the book of Matthew, if you've got your Bibles with you. And the bit you're looking for is Matthew, first, sorry, chapter 14, so 1, 4, so big 14. And then we're going to start from verse 13. So look for the little 13 in Matthew 14. Okay, so Jesus feeds the 5,000. When Jesus had heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place, solitary alone. So, so he went to an alone place. And when the Bible is saying here, when Jesus heard what had happened, the thing that had happened just before this is Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, had been killed. He'd been beheaded. And it was Herod's birthday present, basically, John Baptist head on a plate and so Jesus heard of this and of course wanted to be alone hearing of this the crowds followed him on foot from the towns so poor Jesus he's going to deal with bereavement and grief and loss but because of his status because of his influence people get word that he's going to a certain place and in their thousands they go so this guy doesn't get a break bless him when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed those who were ill. Wow, isn't that amazing? I just wanna pause there because I don't know about you, but if I was going to be alone and I was really in a dark place as Jesus potentially would have been and thousands of people rocked up, my next emotion would not be compassion. It would probably be frustration, anger, and I would probably tell them to get lost. But Jesus doesn't do this. It says he has compassion. Remember that word, we'll come back to that, on them. And he even healed those who were ill, which would have been exhausting. And he must have been tired already after a long journey. So carrying on at verse 15, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they could go to the villages and buy themselves some food to eat. We have, sorry, Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. 
<laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you had no food. You were in a you were in a remote place, which means there's nothing about. I suppose it's a bit like being in Dibden. And imagine you were miles away from any shops and you're with someone and you say, do you know what? I think we need to pop down to Tesco um, because these people are really hungry. And the person actually goes, no, nah, no, nah, it's fine. We don't need to go to Tesco. You just give them something to eat. You'll be thinking, you're crazy. I'm gonna get lynched. So let's see what happens. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he told the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. So it was even more than 5,000. We often think this is the feeding of the 5,000, but that was just the men. So if you add in the women and the children, it's probably nearer to about 7,000, 8,000, maybe even more than that. So it's an amazing story, isn't it? And, and it does speak about generosity. And I wanna speak about two main things um, that it has to do with generosity. One, I wanna come back to this word compassion. And I want to suggest this morning to all of us that the motivation of generosity according to the Bible and to Jesus is compassion. So what is compassion? It's got the word passion in it, hasn't it? And I believe that the word passion um, does feature heavily in what compassion is about. It's having passion to care for other people. It's having a passion to look after the vulnerable or those who are hurting. And Jesus shows compassion on all sorts of people. But the thing that happens throughout the Bible, which is amazing, is that his compassion moves him. So he feels it, but then he doesn't just feel sad. He does something about it. And it's normally with people who are looked down upon, very vulnerable, and perhaps not at all people that other, other individuals would stop for. But Jesus does because of his compassion. So this morning, I wonder if that can speak to us. Do we feel that compassion sometimes, but don't act on it? Or do we find it hard to tap into compassion? Maybe we would like Jesus to give us his compassion for other people. And particularly at this time, these weird, crazy times we're in, there are all sorts of people who are struggling, who need compassion. Second thing I wanna talk about is, um, I want us to notice in this story how Jesus doesn't just care about the spiritual side of people. Because I think in church, we often think that Jesus is only concerned with how much we've read our Bible, how holy we are, how much we've prayed in a week. And I think Jesus is concerned about those things, not because those things are important on their own, but because they feed into a strong relationship with Jesus and he is concerned about us having a strong, good relationship with him. But we see in this story that Jesus doesn't just say to his disciples when they say to him they're hungry, he doesn't just say, oh, it's okay, I'm about to give them the best sermon I've ever preached, that will feed them. He doesn't say that. What he does is he wants to deal with the physical need and he wants to do it right there and then. He doesn't prioritise the spiritual over the physical, which I think often in church we think should be the way. And Jesus doesn't do that. And we see in other places that Jesus cares about the whole person. He doesn't just care about their spirits. That's really important to him. And that is one of his priorities, to get people right in their hearts with God. That's why he came. But he also cares about people's bodies. He heals them cares about their minds, he drives out demons and restores people to a sound mind. He cares about people's hunger, he feeds them, not just with words, but with actual food, and he does that in a miraculous way. So this morning, I guess, again, I just wanna speak into our time at the moment, where there are lots of people who are hungry, there are lots of people 
who are financially in a bad place. Perhaps your family is struggling a bit. Perhaps you're struggling. And this morning I want to encourage you that generosity, um, according to the Christian faith, is really important. It's not just about being generous with our words in a holy way, but it's about being generous with our whole life so that the whole person can be benefited. So what are some of the ways we can be generous? Perhaps you could write a list this week, that's your challenge, um, as you leave here, or perhaps as we have these last few moments together, you could just be writing a list of ideas of how you can be generous this week. Lots of you will be at school and you'll have more opportunities to be generous than those who are locked up at home. So think about the blessing that is. Perhaps one of your teachers has done a great job. They've been really supportive of you, really reassuring, and you want to be generous to them. Perhaps you can just take them in a card that you've written with some lovely words, or you want to buy them a gift, whatever. Or perhaps it's a student that seems just really down. They've, they've been really struggling and perhaps you want to bless them with something. But this week, let me encourage you to look for opportunities to be generous. Because the Bible also says that it's more blessed to give than receive. And I believe that's true. So that's all I want to say. We've come to about 15 minutes, so I'm not going to keep you much longer. Um, but we will just pray together before we go. And please be typing on the chat anything that you'd like prayer for. Obviously, it'll be public, so if it's really private, don't type it. Um, but if it's something general, then we'd love to, to pray with you. So, Lord, thank you for um, the way you showed generosity when you were alive, Jesus, and the way you had compassion on people and that motivated your generosity. And I pray for us that you'd give us opportunities this week to be generous and to, to experience the blessing of being generous, the way it feeds our hearts as well as someone else's. Help us to be joy bringers, um, to be people who are generous in spirit and do it cheerfully um, and without grudge um, and without frustration. Ask it in your name. Amen. So have a great week. And I forgot to say at the beginning, but a special hello to Karis, to Louise, to Alex, to Anna, to Rupert, to Theo, to Grace, and anybody else who's watching this, to Ellie, and those who I'd perhaps normally see on a Sunday. So have a great week, guys, and we'll see you next week. Hope that you have chances to be generous. Let us know if you do. We want to celebrate with you your small acts of kindness um, that, that do big things in other people's lives. Bye.